Hi, it's Christian Bullen here. Hope you're feeling fabulous and ready to thrive. Today's reaction is to Frozen the Musical Broadway and their performance of For the First Time in Forever on Good Morning America. Let's get going. Princess Anna! Princess Anna! <laughs> Princess Anna! Huh? Yeah? <laughs> Sorry to wake you, ma'am. No, 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 you didn't. I've been awake for hours. <laughs> We're here to dress you, ma'am. Uh, dress me? For what? Your sister's coronation, ma'am. My sister's coronation. <gasps> That's right. It's coronation day! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's a great start to the scene. Um, we had the two maids come in and they were really excited, um, using really great vocal qualities to bring excitement to the morning. Um, and they're holding that dress that um, is for Anna to wear to the coronation. And Anna is in bed under the covers. She just thinks it's a normal morning, really. And when she kind of gets woken up, she's like, mm, what's going on? Which is quite funny because they're obviously really excited and she's really chilled and relaxed and doesn't really uh, remember that this is a special day. I also really like the way that they placed the maids upstage of Anna so she can't see the dress yet. That allows the audience to see it and really get to know that um, something special is happening today. And with Anna not being able to see it, it gives a little bit of foreshadowing for um, you know her potential reaction, which does follow. And when she spots the dress and realizes that it is her sister's coronation, she is really excited as well, which kind of leads to a nice feeling of excitement for everyone, for the maids, for Anna, for the audience, uh, for what's to come. Oh, what is she doing? Are you excited? Oh, Princess Anna, this dress isn't going to wear itself. The window is open, shows that door. I didn't know they did that anymore. And there's two nice ladies helping me get dressed. <laughs> Thank you, thanks. For years I've roamed these empty halls. Why have a ballroom with no balls? Coronation day is just the best. So at the start of this song, the director and the creatives are really trying to access Anna's excitement and convey that to the audience. Uh, today is coronation day and they're really trying to show that Anna is excited for this because normally her life is kind of mundane and she exists just within uh, the castle. But today there's people from the outside coming in and um, she might meet somebody that she can fall in love with and she gets to dance. All of these things uh, she's really excited for. So there's different ways of helping to, you know, bring that excitement forward. And one of the things that they're doing really well is the use of the vocal qualities to do that. So for example, the maid, you might have noticed that when she said, this dress isn't going to wear itself, she could have just said to Anna, this dress isn't going to wear itself, right? But instead she kind of elongated the word self and sang it a little bit. So she's like, this dress isn't going to wear itself. And by doing that, it brought like, ooh, this is an exciting moment. Um, you know, we're almost singing because we're that excited. Um, and that kind of lifts the atmosphere. So the vocal qualities there were helping to do that. And then furthermore, Anna's own vocal technique, she is employing a kind of snatch breath, um, an excited kind of snatch breath with a sound to it in each breath she's taking. Um, she wouldn't do that in every moment when she's singing, but in this song, um, she's singing a phrase and then kind of like a little snatch breath like that. And it kind of brings, you know, the fact that she's almost a little bit breathless because she's excited um, and she just can't wait for the day. And that is an example of using the voice to do that. There'll be actual real life people. It'll be totally strange. But wow, am I so ready for this change? Yeah, so I really like the way that Anna's excitement is continuing to build. Um, when she went to, over to the dressing area, there was a nice like oval frame for her face so that the audience could still see her expressions. Um, and it was almost as though she was also looking in the mirror. Um, so it did like a dual thing there. And then when she came out from the dressing area and she had the undergarment dress on, um, she was 
you know, expressing her excitement through her body, using lots of um, arm lines and, you know, using the whole space, which shows how free and happy she's feeling. Um, and then there was a kind of practical moment where um, as part of those kind of arm movements she was doing, she threw her arms up into the air. And that was so that those maids could get the dress onto her really quickly. Um, so it didn't just look as though it was a natural movement. It was also there for a function. Um, and that added to the swiftness of getting that dress on, um, which helps to, you know, give that Disney magic feeling. Everything kind of happens really quickly and magically in a Disney world. Um, so that's kind of an example of how um, that would have been plotted in the rehearsal room. Uh, the director would have thought, how can we get this dress on as quick as possible um, without it looking as though we're trying to do that? Um, so that sort of arms up in the air movement and the dress straight on is, is an example of that. Um, yeah, and there's probably lots more of that sort of thing going on through the song. I don't know if I'm elated or gassy, but I'm somewhere in bed soon. Cause for the first time in Oh, I can't wait to meet everyone! <laughs> okay, so a few more vocal notes. The first one being uh, on the phrase, for the first time in forever. If we wanted to make that really smooth, um, it could have just been a full phrase of, for the first time in forever, with no breath taken anywhere else in the sentence. Um, but Anna sang, for the first time in forever. There was a little breath before forever. Um, now that could have been there to help build the excitement again um, and also punctuate the word forever to show that she's been waiting for so long. Um, so yeah, that was a kind of conscious breath there. It might have also helped vocally to help elongate the note. Um, but yeah, putting a breath in the middle of a phrase is usually a conscious decision because it's not a very natural thing to do. And secondly, I really like the way that she uses her vocal dynamics and pace uh, when she speaks and says, oh, I can't wait to meet everyone. That kind of wait, that gives another oomph, a bit of excitement, you know? So using the voice to express her feelings. Um, so all of that is done really well. And generally, I do think Disney does that well because this musical comes from an animation. So everything's quite animated and the way you can do that best, um, you know, in this sort of fictional, uh, fairy tale, magical world is to use the voice. So that's why I'm talking about that a lot today. Um, so if you are a performer watching and you are using, um, you know, Disney songs in your repertoire, think about how you can add color and shade to your performance through the use of, you know, your vocal qualities. If I meet the one tonight, imagine me gown and all, touchingly draped against the wall, the picture of sophisticated grace. I suddenly see him standing there, a beautiful stranger, tall and fair. I want to stuff some chocolate in my face. But then we'll laugh and talk all evening, which is totally bizarre. Okay, so that section there is set up to signify how Anna really is excited because she might meet the man that she's been waiting for and dreaming of. Um, and they're using the props there to, you know, act as signifiers for that. So she goes over to the portrait um, and she's singing about meeting um, the guy that she wants to meet. And then she goes over to the statue and she's got that little comedy bit where she's like touching his pecs and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of letting us in a little bit into her personality um, and the type of character that she is because she feels like she's been a bit naughty at that moment. Um, the bit where she kind of finishes that and walks down stage centre, although cliche um, and although, you know, a bit obvious, still works and, you know, it kind of gets the audience eating out the palm of your hand really because it's just Disney and we love it. So yeah, it is cliche, it's a little bit overdone, 
you know, making a decision, thinking about it, stopping centre stage and kind of singing out. But it works, it's tried and tested, it's Broadway, and um, yeah, I think it's warranted. <laughs> Okay, so in that section, Elsa enters the stage and in contrast to her sister, Anna, who's very excited and using her body to show that, she's very still and calm and cool, um, which is helping to show her character. Um, so using body and facial expression to, you know, signify how she's feeling in that moment. She's not excited about the day. She wants to get it over. Um, she's worried that she might cause a problem through her powers. She doesn't know what's going to happen. So she's apprehensive and showing that in her stillness, whereas Anna is obviously very excited. So the two contrasts are working well there. I also like the bit just before the doors open where we have the two sisters on the stage. They're both singing the same lyrics, but coming from a different, you know, feeling and motivation. So they both sing It's Only For Today, but Anna's singing that because she's only got today to um, meet somebody that she can fall in love with. So there's urgency there, but there's also urgency from Elsa where she's singing It's Only For Today because she wants the day to be over. So that duality is quite interesting. And I like the way that, you know, the lyricist has put the same lyrics in for both of them, but, we can then read through that, that they're feeling different things. Um, and then, you know, in that section, the lighting design is great as well because it goes really dark, which is, you know, giving us, you know, a contrast when the doors open and the bright light comes through. It's as though, you know, symbolically, the doors have been closed off for a long time and this is the first time uh, in forever that, you know, people from the outside are coming in. And when they do come in, that rush of light, which is done through the lighting design, it's quite, you know, what's the word, um, you know, epic really. <laughs> it's like, and everybody comes out um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of stunning. I like that bit. Yeah, great. <laughs> Yeah, so that bit is really visually beautiful. Um, I absolutely love the visual where the doors open and all the light floods through, as I discussed earlier. Um, and then having the ensemble running in excitedly just gives that kind of lift. It's already been quite exciting, but it's lifted even more. Because they are invested and excited, the audience are going to be as well. Um, and then I love the bit with the rotation where the cast are kind of running fast and then slow and then fast and then slow by playing with the time you know slow to fast slow to fast it's creating this kind of mystical magical feeling of like people bustling in you know um and also the mesmerization that they're feeling when they're entering the castle so it's doing a lot uh, just in that movement um, and because the cast is going to be limited in a Broadway show, there probably in the story would be more people coming in. So having that looks like there's a lot more people coming in to the castle. Um, so that was a great choice. I also like the costume design where the ladies are wearing big uh, flamboyant ball gowns, but Elsa has got this slimline dress on and that's helping to make her stand out and show that she is different. Yeah, so when the characters are coming through the gates, uh, we've got some different things going on on the stage to signify their personalities. So, for example, when Weaselton comes through, um, or Wesselton as he likes to be called, um, he's got this kind of 
swag about his walk. It's almost a bit camp. He does the little hop, which I really like. Um, and that is showing us that he's, you know, a very arrogant person who loves himself. Uh, and then when Hans comes through the rest of the ensemble, they bow and curtsy to him to signify his importance. Um, so yeah, there's stuff that people can do through their posture and visual staging to signify a character's status or personality. Yeah, so in that section, we have the ensemble all come together and they get into like a triangle position with Anna at the tip. Um, everybody is there to back up her excitement and that's like a nice visual there because she's the most important centre stage um, and downstage closer to the audience. Um, there was a bit in the music where there was a kind of heavy accent and everybody lifted their heads up together to show they're all on the same page. Um, and their focus point is kind of lifted above the audience as though they're in a different realm. Uh, they're in this like magical world, which is not really uh, part of the audience's world. So they're not breaking the fourth wall, uh, which means, you know, reaching out to individual audience members. They're looking above it because they're kind of, you know, trying to show that they're in a fairy tale, uh, non-realistic world. Um, and that kind of does that. And then in that last little section there where Anna takes a little run forwards downstage and she sings, nothing's in my way. Um, you know, that little run is kind of separating her from everyone else and showing that um, she's not gonna let anybody get in her way today and she's gonna meet somebody to fall in love with and live happily ever after. Yeah, so I really like that last section there. Um, it's really exciting to watch. We've got the uh, ladies in the ensemble being lifted. Um, the harmonies are beautiful. It's very joyous and celebratory. Um, and yeah, and it really helps to signify the moment, um, especially from Anna's point of view, of excitement for the day. I really like the fact that this song and Frozen the musical in general has been elevated from um, the theme park show. So in um, Disneyland, it's magical, it's incredible, but for this to go into Broadway, it needs to also be sophisticated and employ a lot of like uh, Broadway skills that are different from what you would see maybe in like the theme park. And I do think they've done that. Um, it's not just like an attraction, it is actually, you know, a piece of art and it's really um, engaging to watch. Um, on, on a mature level, it's also engaging. It's not just for kids. Um, it's, it's got that Broadway musical status and it's, and it's great. That was my reaction to the Broadway cast of Frozen the Musical performing for the first time in forever on Good Morning America. If you'd like to share a comment or thought, please do pop one in the comment box below. I love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed the reaction, please do give me a like. For access to more musical theatre related content and resources, head over to my website, christianbullen.com. I'll be doing another reaction very soon, but for now, it's goodbye.